for, among other things, what you have achieved. Dr. Efren Ramirez, who brought the concept of therapeutic community and his successful drug rehab program from Puerto Rico in 1966 to New York City with the non-political invitation of then Mayor John Lindsay, spoke of demoralization. He was addressing the process of a person's continuing failure in trying to achieve a goal. In our case at the time, and probably the case for most of this graduating class at one time, the failure to remain drug-free. From 1959 to November 3rd, 1966, I was hooked to heroin, a.k.a. smack, doogee, junk, the white lady. Wow. I first kicked involuntarily in the tombs. Is it still called that? Yes. I'm glad I didn't find out personally. Uh, in any case, when I first decided to kick voluntarily, I signed into Manhattan General Hospital on 18th Street and 2nd Avenue. It's no longer there for the, the so-called 21-day cure. When I left 21 days later, it wasn't long before I was doing the same old, same old. Altogether, I tried to quit probably seven times, including more attempts at Manhattan General, a five-month trip in the public health hospital at Lexington, Kentucky. Mm. The final time I signed into Manhattan General, November 3rd, 1966, I was there only to clean up for, the, for an upcoming court case not to quit forever. When a person thinks he's tried, but just as important thinks he or she has had the right kind of help and has failed over and over, whether to quit drugs or gambling or to lose weight, he or she no longer thinks it's possible. In fact, the nickel bag I brought to the waiting room in 1966, <laughs> in case I couldn't be admitted that day, I shot up anyhow in the toilet when my name was called for admission. I was, as Dr. Ramirez called it, demoralized. Why did it work for me this time? Because I heard from other junkies that a real program was coming around, and I felt a fleeting tingle of hope in my gut, and volunteered for the coming program, which was Dr. Ramirez's. What started there was what came to be, be the program you're graduating from. Phoenix House, named after what another resident, Bob Wenzel, and I started a newsletter called The Phoenix. The first issue was published in March 1967 with contributions from other residents, including Ron Williams, who was the poetry editor and who ultimately wrote The Phoenix House mm -hmm. Philosopher and has been president and you probably all know this, and CEO of New York Therapeutic Communities since its inception in 1977. I'll just mention one more of many ex-addicts who came out of this environment to become leaders in drug rehabilitation. Carlos Pagan, who among other accomplishments, established the El Regreso Rehab Complex in Brooklyn. But I was not yet committed. And now for another Dr. Ramirez concept, that of limit situation. He said that a person will or might persist in his or her destructive behavior until reaching a limit situation. Here's how I got there. When I heard there was a pilot program for the methadone maintenance program, I attempted to get in, but I was rejected, thank God, because I'd been in Creedmoor State Hospital, mental hospital, previously. A ward counselor ratted me out Remember that concept they had to get rid of? <laughs> to, a, to an encounter group. And that group blasted me, and not having brought up in the group that I was going to try to get into the methadone maintenance program. Instead of feeling attacked and defensive, I felt embraced by the caring group. A part of history you may not know is, yes, in May 1967, some addicts, including Ron Williams and Carlos Pagan, moved into a building on 85th Street in Manhattan, which became named Phoenix House, 
after Ron suggested it, it be named that. But these guys came from Dr. Ramirez's program at Manhattan General, and others of us, as the original plan was to establish the program at Hard Island, off of City Island in the Bronx. We went there, the rest of them. The guys who went to 85th Street did so because Hard Island had previously been a jail, and some had done time there. I left New York 1971 and became part of another community in Iowa City, which is not just Iowa, it's Iowa City, <laughs> until 1989. A community of poets and small press publishers where I established the spirit that moves this press. My small literary press published poems and stories from 1975 to 2000. And in 1983, after publishing an unknown in the United States Czech poet, Yaroslav Seifert, he won the Nobel Prize in literature. The spirit that moves this press was one of only three small independent literary presses ever to have first published people who eventually won the Nobel Prize. Our first book of Seifert's, The Casting of Bells, was the first of his published in English in, in the United States. So I'm done stroking myself now. <laughs> I'll, I'll end with this poem of mine from 1986. On being a grown-up, a man likes having become a grown-up after being an adolescent, sort of, for 40 years or more. But then he doesn't like it much when so often he must be even more grown-up. He used to think grown-up was a place of arrival, where one enjoys the rewards such as acceptance of oneself and others, and takes stock of the responsibilities, like maintaining grown-upness in the face of adolescence. But growing upness, like love, is not only a state but a job, sort of. And as such, paying attention to details is important, whether in lathing a machine part to within 0.0017 millimeter tolerance or getting the dirt out of the corner. Well, that's okay, as it should be for a grown up. But then sometimes the man wants to call his mother to confide in her as a child or a friend. But his mother is now 86 and no longer a grown-up. The man has been feeling blue, even having friends, and dissatisfied even with his work going tolerably well. So he, he is reminded to call his mother, who too has been blue. That's it. Thank you. Good evening, all. I'm Charmaine McFarland. 